Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. It is October 21st, uh, and it is 1.39 in the afternoon. Nothing has really happened at all today. My days off are very, very quiet. Really nothing happens, which is amazing. It's so peaceful. Have you ever just wanted to cry just a little bit? Just like this little moment, it's like a burp. You know, I just want, I just want to cry. <laughs> just a little bit and you're not quite sure why I've been struggling not struggling that has been bubbling up periodically over the past couple of days and I figured out what it is I figured out what it is why I wanted to cry a little bit because my life is so peaceful so boring <laughs> and so easy there's no drama no trauma the most difficult thing I struggle with today is the fact that my garage door opener is inconsistent in its behavior that's it. And I realized just a moment ago, like, I was, like, gratitude. I was, like, feeling this bubble of gratitude that I didn't even know how to identify. But I, I wanted to cry a little bit just out of, like, relief. Because if you know my story, my life has not always been simple or easy. Um, so, <laughs> it's just nice. Uh, so, I do apologize. I'm going to include a video. Kind of. Some of you are going to like it. Um, I'm going to include a video I took of Eleanor this morning. I was uh, walking down the stairs from my little computer area. And Eleanor likes to lay on the carpet on the second floor right over the stairs. Right by the railing. I don't know why. She loves that one particular spot. And she had rolled over on her back wanting her belly rubbed. I'm rubbing her belly. And she just... Oh, she can take a belly rub for 20 minutes. It's like she just, just, it can last all afternoon. She's fine with that. Buddy gets so much attention. He demands so much attention. And she does occasionally get kind of eclipsed by his behavior. And I know that she's like, ugh, what about me? So when I do get time alone with Eleanor, I give it to her 100%. And today she wasn't letting go. She was not letting go. And uh, I finally figured, oh, I need to get some of this on camera. So we had about literally 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know how long. It was eternal of uh, rubbing Eleanor's belly. And uh, so I'm going to include a video of that. It's about a minute and a half long. So if you're not into my cats, sorry, but here's Eleanor. Now let me pause this one sec. I have to get to a red light before I can hit stop recording. Oh, what am I doing today? Uh, I am going to Ikea right now because I need to replace a couple mats I have under the cat's uh, food and water bowls and the water fountain and because uh, the ones I have are just kind of poop in the bed and I need to get some replacement trays for them and then I'm going to grab some lunch while I'm there. Then the next step is to go grocery shopping for me. If you watch my channel, I'm always grocery shopping. I'm kind of like a little old European lady who just buys groceries for the, you know, a day or two in a row. I don't buy groceries for like the next two or three weeks. Blah, blah, blah. Let me let you go. I'm going to reach for the camera without, without looking, trying to end this video here. Is that working? <laughs> Every time I try to walk away from Eleanor, she rolls over on another side to make more of her belly available. Oh, I got my finger in her ear and she loves that. <laughs> right, Eleanor? Oh, such a good cat. Look at you. Under your armpit. She loves to be scratched under her armpit. Oh, yeah. Look at her. See her, her, her other paw kind of curls in when she likes it. Oh, yeah. Right in the armpit. Right in the armpit. <clears throat> Eleanor is a very funny cat. She has strange preferences. She loves it in her armpit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I scare you? Did I scare you? Give me that belly again. Give me that belly again. That fluffy belly. Look at that fluffy belly. Oh, you're a good cat, Eleanor. You're a good cat. Okay. Hmm, Daddy's gotta eat some lunch. I'll see you soon. Okay, I'll keep rubbing you. I'll keep rubbing your belly. Look at that fluffy, 
fluffiness. Hey there, I've arrived at Ikea. I forgot it's a Saturday, middle of the afternoon, not the day to go to Ikea, but here I am. Um, I have to remember, this is more for me than you, I have to remember to plug in my, charge my work device. I have to read the read file regarding our crew room door code change. Let's go in the wrong way. Uh, and then what else do I have to do? Oh, it's loud. Oh, I forgot. I opened up a carton of milk. I know that's not very exciting, but I have to finish it before I go to work tomorrow. Otherwise, it's a whole half gallon of milk that's going to go to waste. Oh, Christmas is out at Ikea. Look. Yay. I'll browse around later, but first I have to go to this section, the as is section. I always have to walk in here just in case. Nothing fake, fake plants. Yeah, nothing worth. I love those chairs. I love those. My cats would just use them as scratching pads. Nope, don't need anything here. That's probably the least appealing meal I've ever seen in my life. Something has changed with the hiring here at Ikea. I'm not quite sure why, but the attention to detail and the care that you usually get, even when it comes to something like plating your food, is missing uh, at this Ikea, which it's, it's, it's very clear. So something has changed. This is a very nice chair. It's... <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 not getting out. Uh, <laughs> nice chair. It's like a 1960s kind of shape. Uh, the chair is 500. The ottoman's 200. Prices at IKEA have certainly gone up, uh, but they offer you 5% back if you're a family member. Crazy. But this is the table I wanted when I bought my house. This is the Doxta. Uh, it is now a hundred dollars, one hundred and ten dollars more than it was when I bought my house two and a half years ago. Their prices have gone really sky, they've skyrocketed. Uh, but uh, that table was always out of stock. Now they have it in stock, but I really don't need it. I don't know, know the last time I ate dinner at my kitchen table. Uh, what my kitchen table is, is a catch-all for everything in my house. <laughs> it's not a table, it's a drop-off spot, but I love that table. Okay, first purchase of the day. This Ziploc bag is four and a half liters or five quarts. This one is six, the green one, the dark green one, it's six quarts or six liters. These are perfect for putting ice in so I can put it then in my lunch bag. Fantastic. And do you remember when I first bought my Sabbath heat? I had this silicone lid and these uh, stainless steel Things, yeah, I think I threw them away. And these are really perfectly sized for a meal. There's three of them for 10 bucks. I think I'll get those. This is what I really came for. These are big trays that are meant to go under a shoe rack, but they're perfect to put bowls of cat food or water bowls on there uh, and uh, so that food doesn't end up on the floor. Ta -da. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm really, really here for. I also need a cheap comforter, um, something thin, nothing too heavy because I sleep very, very warm. And for 20 bucks for a full queen, I'll pick one of these up for the bedroom. Um, I, I would like the idea of changing a, uh, putting a duvet cover on that, but um, I know I'm never going to change a duvet cover ever. I'm never going to wash it uh, and because it'll eventually be so covered in cat hair that I might as well have a felt blanket, right? Uh, so after it is not usable for me because it's covered in cat hair, I'll just recycle it. It'll become a cat bed as everything in my house does eventually. Do I need a cat shaped doormat when no one is ever going to see it except for the homeless woman who lives in the shrubs in front of my house? No, nobody's ever going to see it, but it's going to make me happy when I see it. So yes, I need this doormat. It's $15. I've spent $15 in worse places, right? My eyes went right up to that cinnamon bun and I'm thinking, weren't they just a buck? 
recently. They went up 50 cents. And then I saw... <laughs> Not actual size. <laughs> okay, Ikea, you got me. Look at this super sweet advent calendar. It's 20 bucks. Um, you build the little cardboard boxes yourself and you fill them yourself. Uh, what a nice little gift for somebody. Uh, every year I watch Cloud Surfing Andy do her advent calendar with jealousy because I just wish I could do an advent calendar with stuff in there that I would, I would use. It's always skincare that I'm not interested in. There's always some kind of lip color or something involved. There's just never a, an advent calendar for middle-aged, balding, bearded, pudgy, furry, gay guys. I don't think there's one. Maybe there's a market. <sighs> I want this candle. I want this candle. Oh my goodness. It smells just like uh, the dry bar shampoo that we get in one of our hotels. I love dry bar shampoo. I've got 50 gallons of philosophy in my, my showers, but I don't need it. Oh, but I love it. I can't burn scented candles. I just can't. I know that cats can't have essential oils in their environment because their respiratory systems aren't built to handle them, but I'm not sure about scented candles. I just don't burn them just in case. Um, and I only burn regular candles when I have my air purifiers going and or uh, some uh, the door open or windows open. Just, I don't want soot in the air because of their little respiratory systems, but... I love that candle. What else is that to look at? I bought a couple more things. I found this king size um, polar fleece blanket for 21 bucks in the as is section. So I got that because I'm sure I'll use it. And remember those uh, bowls, those <laughs> cat scratcher bowls? Yeah, I went back to Walmart. They had four of them. I grabbed all four. Um, yeah, 60 bucks for cat scratchers. Um, but there's one downstairs, there's one upstairs, uh, and both cats love them. So I'm gonna have one more for downstairs, one more for upstairs, and then two backups because eventually these will have to go. So yeah, I hoard cat scratching pads now, but anything for my babies. Look at the, <gasps> that's so funny because that's exactly what they do. And remember my tire light was orange? It's not like super low, but it's definitely softer than it should be. And that's the one that was repaired. This is the second gas station I've come to to change to add air. And this is the second time that I've come upon a hose being cut. So I hope, hope that my tire will survive being parked in employee parking for the next four days because I think I'm out of options for gas, for air in my tires. All right, let's go. Grocery shopping. <laughs> My God. So I just walked out of Sprouts. I spent another 50 bucks. I have been hemorrhaging money over the past couple of days, hemorrhaging money, but my paycheck was really good. It was probably my best paycheck ever as a flight attendant. Uh, I got credit for 112 hours last month. Usually I work around between 78 and 82. So, and anything over 85 was time and a half. So. I don't feel too bad about spending money, but I spent like 50 bucks here at, uh, at Sprouts. If I had spent that money on groceries, regular flat out raw meat and vegetables and stuff like that to cook, well, it would have taken me a long time to cook the meals I got, plus two thirds, three quarters of the food I would have purchased would have sat in my fridge for a month and then I would have had to throw it away. It's food waste is a very big issue in my house. I cook a lot and I throw a lot away because it's just me and the two cats. But So I don't feel too bad about spending money here at Sprouts for pre-made meals. They're really high quality. They're delicious. They're very healthy. They're easy. They're well done. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so today has really been nothing but me going to Ikea Sprouts. I did go to Walmart. Uh, I bought those cat scratchers there and I they actually had Eleanor's food, her regular food. So I bought a bag of that too. Um, but yeah, so I've been hemorrhaging money. Um, so this hasn't really been very interesting for this video. So I figured I would answer a question from my comment section and some, hopefully that's payment for your time in terms of an interesting 
amusing story. I don't know. But someone asked, and I forget what I forget their name, but they asked any uh, any suggestions or advice I have for someone who's maybe afraid to fly or afraid of heights and then getting on an airplane, which is traveling like six and a half miles up in the air, right? So the fear of heights is very different than a fear of flying to my understanding and my own experience. I was afraid to fly before I was a flight attendant. I'm not sure if I've told you this before, but I was terrified, terrified of flying. Uh, it was any, any motion, any turbulence, and I was like, I don't care if you were using the armrest, I smacked my hands on the armrests. I would have this white hot death grip on the armrests. <laughs> Lamaze class breathing and praying to a woman I don't believe in. I mean, I was at, crying quietly, but dramatically. I was terrified of any turbulence because it meant I was gonna die. And that's just what was gonna happen, right? Turbulence. Um, so that was very different than being afraid to, uh, of heights. Now, I could be on a balcony sitting far back close to the door and be just fine. If I lean over the edge, I'm gonna throw up and have vertigo. I just do not like heights but you know as a, a for a career path I, I i spend a good amount of time spending like six and a half miles up in the air so mm, fear of heights and fear of flying are very very different so for fear of flying for me personally i had the luxury of time off before i went to training i had a six weeks warning before i had to go to training and those three of those weeks i was still in the tampa area in uh, florida I got a pass to, to um, Bush Gardens and I rode roller coasters for six to eight hours or more a day, every day for like three weeks. Now I had not been on a roller coaster since 1977 and roller coasters in 77 were very different than they are today. Uh, so I went to Bush Gardens and I figured the safest and the easiest way to do this was to go on what's called a family coaster uh, and that was... Um, um, what, t um, what is it? Cheetah hunt, cheetah hunt. Um, and, uh, so I figured it's a family coaster. Children are allowed to go on it by themselves. I think this is probably a safe ride for me. So I got in the front car, not my goal. I just got in line and I, they, there you go. Go in and get in that car. Got in, there's one guy next to me, and I said to him, I said, hey, you know, I'm, I, I apologize in advance. I'm probably going to scream. This is my first time on a coaster since 77. And he goes, oh, no worries. That's a nice, smooth, easy start. No worries. He was lying. Because Cheetah Hunt has this pneumatic system that thrusts you forward. I mean, your ears are blown to the back of your head. And it's a very very scary and thrilling actually in the end uh and uh, up and down and air <sighs> oh my god it was designed to terrify people like me and i, I mean i don't know how i handled it I, i'm surprised my teeth didn't snap in two pieces but um so i went on roller coasters every day and i i spent a lot of time on cheetah hunt because it actually i think uh was the closest to what airplane turbulence really feels like <laughs> this and then i air time and oh but um, Montu, Montu in Bush Gardens, Tampa is my favorite coaster of all time. So it took me probably two weeks to go from uh, screaming to arms up in the air, feet loose. This sounds like a different kind of movie. Um, just, um, you know, f just laughing and feel like flying bonelessly through the air. It was just fantastic. But it took me a couple weeks to get there. And by the time I went to training, I was perfectly able to get on an aircraft and handle turbulence as if it were nothing because it was just another ride. Um, now, if I really thought about it, we're six and a half miles up in the air, traveling 520 some odd miles an hour, usually. Uh, it's a very different story. But, um, so I'm afraid of heights as well. Now, I'm fine, I'm not sure if I already said this earlier, but I can sit on a balcony and be fine. I can't lean over the edge with any comfort. Like I'll throw up and the sense of vertigo will just go right through me. Um, so being afraid of heights and getting on an aircraft, there's a couple things you might try. First, do not, do not, do not, do not sit 
in the emergency exit row or in the middle of the aircraft by the window. Just don't do it. Don't. And uh, because you'll see the wing. Now, an aircraft wing, you think, is stationary. No, an aircraft wing, it'll literally do this. It will look like it's gonna flop off. <gasps> it's terrifying. I still am uncomfortable seeing the tip of an airplane wing do this. Oh my God, it's gonna break. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not. But it's designed to have some flex to it, otherwise it would snap. But uh, yeah, just don't sit there. Sit in an aisle seat up in front, in the very front. This is because uh, it's the least turbulent part of the aircraft. The back is the worst. The middle, who knows? I don't know, they say it's the safest place to be if the plane crashes, but an aircraft hasn't crashed in the United States since 2009, right? So um, I would sit in the front of the aircraft in the aisle, preferably in sight of the flight attendant. So if they start freaking out, I know I can freak out too, but otherwise I'm fine. Um, middle seat, if you're with friends and family and kids and stuff, the middle seat's okay, but you're usually so cramped. You want a sense of freedom that you can get out of that seat and go to the bathroom or take a walk when you can or just, get, you know, give yourself some space and some air. Uh, I actually would recommend that if you're afraid of heights, that you sit by the window. Personally, I would like you to sit by the window up in the front of the aircraft because seeing the horizon, seeing the clouds, seeing the city below you, it feels very surreal. It doesn't, it's not real. It looks like a movie. And then you're sitting in a comfortable seat, unless you're in my airline. Um, so you're sitting in a comfortable seat, probably bored at this time and impatient to get out of there. Uh, so to look out the window, it's novel, it's interesting, it'll keep your attention. And it kind of dis distracts you from really think thinking about how high you are in some abstract fashion, which is scarier than the reality. Blah, blah, blah. Did that answer any questions? Uh, so I've shared a little story with you. That's my payment for you sitting here watching this probably very boring video. Uh, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna make some dinner. I have some stuff to make at home, probably just some pasta. Give the cats their treats. I have to plug in my work device. I have to drink that milk before it goes bad. What else do I have to do? I'll have to watch this video again to see what I have to do later tonight. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, toodaloo, fly, fly safe. Yeah, I almost forgot to say it again. <laughs>